You can no longer let yourself just go loose. You're careful about what you put on your body because you're changed. Your reality has changed. When you were in the world, you wore it tight. It was fitting. You know, you showed your parts. And I told you, this is, ladies, this is for your benefit. Listen, um, the world calls it private. Your private parts, you know what I told you that? But God doesn't call it private. God calls it sacred. Your body is sacred. You see, if you just consider yourselves to be private and your body to be private, it's easy to find a private place to show your private parts. Mm -hmm. I mean, why are you going way up into the very top of the movie stand? Who does that? I can't see up there. My <laughs> My wife and I come to the movie and we already run late. You know? <laughs> I don't ever have a problem finding a seat because I'm on the third row. Nobody sits on the third row. But I can't see way back up there. <laughs> What's the purpose of you going way up into the last seat? Cause you know some stuff getting ready to go down. <laughs> and you need some privacy. Mm -hmm. But listen, here's what I'm trying to say. When you consider yourself to be sacred, there is no private place to reveal what is sacred. And so you reduce the value of you when you think of these parts to be private. You reduced the value of how God view you. It's more than that, greater than that, wider than that, deeper than that, higher than that. They are sacred parts. They are so sacred that they're only to be given and to be shown to one person. And that is the person of whom you will come into covenant relationship. All right. Enter into marriage, which is God's covenant and allow him to see what is sacred. Amen. Good God from Zion. <laughs> <laughs> but when you consider it to be private, you may show that to a lot of people. And I don't mean to shame anybody. I'm just trying to teach you the word of the Lord. Amen. Make sure that joker <laughs> is saved but make sure you're saved so then you cover up you make sure that you're dressed appropriately the Bible teaches that in Titus I don't have time to get into the scriptures it teaches these things if you are dressing provocatively and you got everything open and out then why do you get upset when men gawk why do you get upset when men want to touch and they talk that crazy, silly, worldly talk? Don't talk to me like that. That ain't that type of girl. Well, how am I supposed to know? <laughs> you know? I mean, have you seen the woman on the streets? She dressed in her figured, tight skirts. She's got her stilettos. She's got her fishnets on. She's got her nails painted with glittery stuff. She's got her long eyelashes. She's got her hair hat on. <laughs> She's got her hand up. She's doing her thing. <laughs> I mean, when people do that, they do that to grab attention. And so, yes, men will ride by, they'll scoot by. And for the right price, you can have my private parts. Mm -hmm. And when you come inside the church, this is what I'm trying to get you to see. When you come inside the church, you don't see no difference. They got their hair hats on. They got their nails glittered. Their skirts are tight. The girls are hanging out. You know? 
I mean, you are dressing so suggestively. What am I to think? Oh, you look so holy today. <laughs> My God, you look like a mother. <laughs> no. No. So he approaches, he approaches and he comes to you the way you suggest yourselves. So if you put yourselves out to look like the woman that is on the street, quit complaining if he treats you like the woman on the street. Because that's what you suggest when you dress like that what am I supposed to think you think I'm supposed to think that you are Christian a good girl and you got all of your private parts showing pants so tight I can see the George Washington on your quarter oh, oh that's, that's tight <laughs> I know you got two quarters. <laughs> Cause I can, I can see the George Washington. <laughs> My time is done, y'all. <laughs> So what you want to know, are you saved and not this watered down version of salvation? I want to know, is Christ in your heart? Listen, why is this so important? Because he cannot treat you no better, no greater than what is in his heart. And if he doesn't have Christ in his heart, how can he respect you in the Christian way that God wants him to respect? How can he even take up the responsibility to love you like Christ loved the church? How can he sacrifice himself like Christ sacrificed himself for the church if Christ is not in his heart? That's why you have problems submitting. That's why you have problems loving him like Christ loved the church uh, and in honoring him and respecting him because Christ is not in your heart. When Christ is in your heart, here's what I'm saying, when it comes to being saved, you come into a new reality. And that reality changes the way you think. It changes the way you carry yourself. It changes the people that you put around you. It changes your whole thought process. It will change the words that you say. You start watching your tongue. You start watching the places that you go. And see, listen, get this, because when, when the seed of righteousness is in you, you don't have to do it. It becomes an automatic. You don't feel the same way. I mean, you can still try to go to the club and do the running man, you know, and, and, and the nay-nay, for whatever reason, it ain't the same. <laughs> you know, you're trying to do that, but when the seed of God gets in your heart, for some reason, you out there, and you be wondering, what in the world am I out here? Why am I doing this? <laughs> you know, and everybody else out there having fun, <laughs> to, 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 and you out there, looking shameful, feeling different, and then you find yourself just kind of, the girl said, where you going, girl? I'm tired. You're not tired. You are shameful because the seed of God will not allow you to sit up there in front of these folk and entertain them that way. So you find yourself a seat, and when the girls go home, you declare to yourself, as a matter of fact, before you get in your car, you start repenting. And you declare to yourself, I'll never go back to that place again. That only happens when you have been impregnated and you've been, you had the, a born again experience with God. It changes who you are. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. We need you, Lord. 
We need you, Lord, right now. We lift our hands and bow our knees and worship at your throne. We need you, Lord. We need you. 